Hello, welcome back to Batch Reviews. Today we're looking at this, the Alfa Romeo Tonale, Alfa Romeo's new small SUV. But um, there's quite a few people in here, isn't there? So let's go and take a look at the car in the studio. This is more like it, isn't it? Now we're able to take an uninterrupted look at the new Alfa Romeo Tonale. But before we actually get stuck in, if you've got any questions about this car, do drop them in the comments box below. If you like this video, then give it a little thumbs up. And for much more content like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Right then, let's crack on with it. Now it's hard to emphasize just how important this car is for Alfa Romeo worldwide, but especially so in the UK. Now last year, in 2021, Alfa sold 1,600 cars in the UK. Admittedly, they've only got a model range of two, the Giulia and the Stelvio, but Alfa has really high hopes for this car in the UK. They think in a full year, they're gonna be shifting between 2,500 and 3,000 tonales. That just shows you how important this car is. Not only does the Tonale widen Alfa Romeo's product range to three, but it's an entry into the hugely popular C SUV segment in the UK. And with PHEV power, plug-in hybrid power, Alfa Romeo can better cover the company car sector, as we know, a hugely lucrative part of the market. This is also the first in a huge model blitz for Alfa Romeo. There's gonna be a new Alfa Romeo launched every year from now for the next 10 years. Their first full electric car is gonna arrive in 2024. And then in 2027, Alfa Romeo is gonna be a fully electric brand. Right then, that's enough of the chatter. That's enough of the where this car sits in the marketplace. I'm gonna go behind the camera now and show you everything you need to know. Let's start with the front then. I mean, it is an Alfa Romeo after all, isn't it? In actual fact, the front takes on a newfound significance really because let's face it, C SUVs all tend to look the same. So if you've got a very uh, distinctive front end to your car, you're definitely going to get some attention from potential buyers. And I think this car's definitely gonna get a lot of attention. Now, let's just talk about some of the styling cues at the front here because there is quite a lot to talk about in this car so at the front we've got of course the typical Alfa Romeo shield grille right in the center this car is a speciale trim it's a special launch version so the trim is all black but on the TI model the basic model it'll come in chrome but there is a clear monographic look to the front of this car. So by that, I mean there is a strong horizontal plane and you see that in so many Alfa Romeos. It started in the 60s with the GT Junior. We've seen it in the Montreal from the 1970s. And then of course, the GTV from the 70s and the 80s. Now the three lights, they are a nod to the, uh, well, cars like the SZ, um, the Brera and the 159. Now, all cars in the UK, they get full LED matrix headlights as standard. Now, there is a strong shoulder line. You can see that it starts from here and it goes all the way along the side of the shoulder and finishes up here. Now, Alfa Romeo call that the GT line. It sort of harks back to the GT from the 1960s. This car, like I say, is a speciale, so you get these 20 inch tele dial wheels, and they are, well, s such a classic Alfa Romeo design trait, isn't it? Um, 18s come as standard, 19s come on the Veloce, and then this, the speciale, gets these 20 inch rims. Both the speciale and the Veloce get Brembo brakes as standard with these glorious red brake calipers. 
You might think that is it for the nods back to Alfa Romeo's heritage, but not so. They've, Alfa Romeo have also paid some attention to the rear end, especially the top part of the window shape. That is very reminiscent of the Alfa Romeo 8C Competizione from 2007. And then something you'd probably completely miss, but it is there, is the bottom of this rear screen. We're talking here. Now it comes down into a bit of a V shape and there is, there's been some classic Alfa Romeos with that V shaped glass. It started in the 1930s with the 8C 2900B and then more recently the Alfa Romeo 147 hatchback and the Brera Coupe have all had that similar style of uh, rear window and again we've got another strong monographic. Things like the 164 of the 1980s had a very, very strong horizontal rear light cluster. In the 90s, the GTV had it as well. So the slim rear LED lights, I mean, they mirror the day running lights that you find at the front of the car. And there isn't a full width LED light bar because puncturing it right at the center is the Alfa Romeo badge sitting very proudly there. And then beneath it is the Tonali script. I think the back end of the car is just as smart as the rest. Overall, I think it's a very cohesive piece of design. Very nice indeed. Um, one thing that uh, I do like is this gloss black trim. Normally this is sort of matte plastic, but here Alfa Romeo have decided to paint it. They paint it in a darker gray to the uh, lighter gray color for the body. We do have some fake rear exhaust pipes, another on the other side, but that is par for the course in this part of the segment, isn't it? Overall, like I say, I think it's a very nice piece of design. Inside then, and just like we've seen with the facelifted Giulia and the Stelvio, there has been a big upgrade in terms of quality, and that is also an area Alfa Romeo is really focused on from now onwards. And the quality of the construction in here is really nice. Not so, lots of nice soft touch plastics. Everything feels really well screwed together. All the switch gear feels really tight and together and well designed and well engineered. Now, let's talk about a classic Alfa Romeo design theme. They, Alfa calls it Canocciale. How do you like my Italian pronunciation? If any Italians are watching this, feel free to um, tell me off for my pronunciation, but I think that's how it's pronounced, Canocciale. And the literal translation of that is telescope. And I mean, it is like looking down a pair of binoculars the wrong way, doesn't it? Um, now just ignore the warning lights we've got here because this is an early pre-production car. And um, also this is not exactly a normal environment for a car to be inside a studio using the battery, draining the battery, etc. So ignore all of that. But what you can see is this lovely graphic. So when you start the car up, you get the outline of the day, of the day running lights and of the uh, Alpha shield grill and when you turn the uh, car off you get a view of the rear lights that's really nice now there are a number of different uh, displays you can have you can have a heritage theme you can have a relaxed theme so there's minimum instrumentation and then you can have an evolved theme which is a lot more modern one thing you might have noticed in here is this. Look at this ambient lighting. Hmm? So this, uh, when you've switched the car off and you haven't got the lighting on, it just looks like a piece of aluminium with a nice little uh, texture to it. But when you've got the lights on, you can see it really does glow. Really nice little feature that. And you can change all of those. There are different colors. So you can go for yellow, so that looks, uh, Press that, there we are. You can go for uh, white if you wish, um, sort of a turquoisey colour, and then there's the blue. Let's stick with the red because it's very Alfa Romeo. Now, Alfa Romeo is calling the Tonale its most technological car ever, and they're not lying because there is a ton of tech on board here. Let's start off with the obvious the 10.25 inch touchscreen here um it is a huge departure from anything we've seen from alfa romeo it works very well it responds to commands very uh succinctly 
uh, it's very quick to operate and the screen resolution is fantastic. You also get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, which is a nice feature. There's Amazon Alexa as well. You can even uh, get your Amazon parcels delivered to this car. The delivery driver has a special code and they can drop off the parcels into your boot. Um, along with that, there's also software over the air updates. So it, re it reduces the number of times you have to go to the dealer for simple updates updates to the car. Every single Tonale gets a wireless charging pad, which you can see here. There are some really lovely design touches in here as well. A nice row of uh, physical controls here. Not everything is controlled through the touch screen. You get uh, two little USB ports here, USB-A and USB-C, which is very handy. There's, of course, the DNA switch. D for dynamic, N for natural, and A for advanced efficiency. You can also turn it all the way around to the top to turn off the stability control. Into the centre console, really nice use of plastics here. It all feels very sturdy and nice to the touch. Two cup holders of good size, and there's a little dinky armrest here as well with a little bit of storage in there as well. Moving to the steering wheel... Now this Speciale gets this sports steering wheel as standard, really nice soft grain leather with these uh, friction pads here where your thumbs go. Veloce and the Speciale also get these wonderful aluminium paddles. Um, I had these paddles on a Giulia Veloce I used to run in a previous life for Auto Express and they really do feel so, so expensive. Something you would not expect to find in a premium family SUV. Good size glove box as well. Very good size, actually. And, uh, yeah, the plastics start to get a little bit cheaper down there, but that's exactly what you'd expect from a car of this type, really. And the door bins are a decent size as well. In the back, and there is space for three at a push. The driver's seat here is set in my driving position. I'm 5 foot 11 and there's plenty of knee room behind my seat. The same can't be said for headroom as six footers heads will be brushing the roof. There's a couple of USB chargers in the centre console, there's a drop down armrest with a ski hatch and the isofix points are easily reachable. In the boot and there's 500 litres of space on offer. That's a bit down on the likes of the BMW X1, Audi Q3 and Jaguar E-Pace. The Tonali's boot is nicely square though. There's no load lip with the boot floor in its highest position and there's loads of underfloor space. Or you can lower the boot floor for taller items. An electric tailgate comes as standard too. The Tonali shares its platform with the Jeep Renegade and engine choices are nice and simple. Arriving first will be a mild hybrid petrol with 158 brake horsepower paired with a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox and a 48-volt electric motor. The mild hybrid setup will allow cruising and low-speed manoeuvres to be done in electric mode. Arriving in December 2022 will be a plug-in hybrid. It'll use a 1.3-litre turbo petrol engine that'll power the front wheels, while a 90-kilowatt electric motor powered by a 15.5-kilowatt-hour battery will drive the rears, making it four-wheel drive. Total power will be 271 brake horsepower, and the PHEV powertrain will give between 37 and 50 miles of pure electric running. There's also McPherson suspension with adaptive dampers on Speciale and Veloce trim levels. Speaking of trims, there's just two and a special launch model for the time being. The entry-level TI is very well equipped and it gets 18-inch diamond cut alloys, matrix LED headlights, parking sensors and a rear view camera, an electric tailgate, cloth and vegan leather seats, ambient lighting, wireless charging pad, sat-nav, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The Veloce adds a more sporty flavour, with aluminium paddle shifters and pedals, adaptive suspension, 19-inch diamond-cut alloys, Brembo red brake calipers, and an Alcantara interior. The Speciale Launch Edition will sit between the TI and the Veloce, and it gets the Veloce's equipment plus 20-inch wheels. No pricing has been confirmed just yet, but I would guess prices will kick off from around £30,000. 
So that is the Alfa Romeo Tonale then. In terms of how you can get behind the wheel and the timings for the rest of the year, this car gets its full public unveiling at the Good Vessel Speed in June. In July, order books open. The hybrid is the first to go on sale and that arrives in September. And in December comes the PHEV. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and for many more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel. Until next time, see you later. Bye-bye.